go. Greetings everyone, Ray Landis here with another guitar adventure. And as you can see today, I'm at the farm. Not the funny farm, the guitar farm. And today I want to talk to you about this guitar. It's another one of those nice little Squire affinities. And wow, these things have really impressed me. So I haven't really done much alteration to the original configuration of this guitar because these guitars in and of themselves are good. With a couple small tweaks, they can be great. This Affinity is a little bit older model and I've got the configuration on the body pretty much the same way that it was originally. And the neck is a little different. It's uh, from a more recent Affinity. And the combination is really nice because these parts are all interchangeable. And, you know, at the farm here, there's always a lot of work to do. And we use tractors and plows and different types of things to keep the place in order. This is my favorite piece of farm equipment. This thing right here gets you through anything. What do you think? Yeah. You like that? Yeah. You want to play it? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to kind of break this down for you a little bit and tell you kind of what we're looking at. And uh, it's, again, it's not exactly factory stock, but the parts that are included in this are really pretty much the way they would come uh, from the factory. So the body, we've got the HSS configuration. We've got a five-way switch. We've got one volume and two tones. And we've got a tremolo that has been decked. And the reason I decked it is because it's one of those thin zinc tremolos. Uh, they don't really work very well. And they, uh, it's hard to keep them in tune. But there's nothing wrong with them if you put them tight against the body and kind of turn it into a hardtail strat. And then you've got a nice stable place for the strings to rest and you don't have any, any tuning issues. And that's the reason uh, this one is decked. Some of them I actually take and put a nice block inside and then I can actually use the tremolo. But with that little thin zinc block in there, you really, you really can't use it. It's not, it's not stable and it won't stay in tune. One of the things I did to this particular guitar after I decked the tremolo was I took off the original saddles and put these brass saddles that I got from Timu. And you can also get these on Amazon. You can get them on AliExpress. And I did that because it just makes it look a little nicer. This red with that gold looks so nice. And then I put black screws the, these are the intonation screws, and that kind of sets it off a little bit. So I thought that really made it look nicer. It didn't really affect it in any way because the original saddles were really good. But this just, I thought, made it look a little nicer cosmetically. So a little bit more about the pickups. These pickups uh, are not bad. They're really actually pretty good. You have the five-way switch, normal Stratocaster switching. You've got the neck pickup. You've got the neck and the middle. You've got the middle pickup, you've got the middle and the bridge, and then you've got the bridge. How about that? So one of the things that this guitar has that most people think is really negative is these pickups, they're ceramic. They have ceramic magnets. And I got to say that they really don't sound bad. Some people actually prefer the ceramic magnets. I prefer Alnico 5s or some other type of magnet, but these actually do sound good. And inside here, I've taken a lot of these apart. I actually haven't taken this one apart, but I can tell by looking at the switch that it's probably got one of those really thin uh, circuit board type of switches and these little tiny dime sized pots. And I want to say again, there's nothing really wrong with those. They, they work, they sound good. Uh, they just don't have the appeal that a lot of people would prefer because they want to have that, that, that beefier, the larger pots and that nice spring-loaded uh, oak Grigsby switch. Uh, but these work fine, and unless you're going to take this guitar on the road, you're not going to have any problem with that. So one of the things I normally do when I deck the tremolo is I put a little silver star right here. But 
as I mentioned in one of my other videos, once I did that, I ended up figuring a way to use the star as another decorative ornament. And I used it up at the top, and that kind of became my trademark. Okay, so just to sum up what we're looking at here in the body, we've got the thinner affinity body, which I think to me is, is great because it's light. The body's made out of poplar. It's super lightweight. You can handle this, you know, without getting a backache. Uh, the thinner body has its own things that you have to deal with, but at the same time, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with the thinner body. And in some ways I've learned to prefer that. So this particular body I bought separate from the neck. This body's probably somewhere in the mid teens, like somewhere between 2013, 2016, somewhere in there. And this is the, the older style that has the six screw trim, which I kind of prefer in this model. Now the new ones have the two point trim. They're okay, but I think these are really, they're really stable especially if you put a, a heavier block in them. But the body itself is, is a little bit older model, uh, but isn't that a beautiful color, like a candy apple red? And like I say, the body is quite a bit older than the neck. Now this neck, I wanna talk a little bit about this. This neck has a lot of great qualities. It came off of a 2024 Squire Affinity Stratocaster. And there's another car. I'm getting some traffic today. So uh, this one has uh, an Indian laurel fretboard. Uh, these are probably a thinner fret. They're not sharp at all. I did a little bit of work on the fret, uh, fret ends on this one. And on a guitar like this, I usually take a foam block, one of those sanding blocks, like a 3 320 grit, and just kind of go over the edges of the frets. And that smooths them out for one doesn't damage anything and it kind of rolls the fingerboard a little bit and I don't see any discoloration so that worked out really well. All it's right so this neck has 21 frets and it's actually pretty nice. The headstock on this is like the 70s type headstock but in the stock version the tuners are actually 10 millimeter but they have split shafts at the top. So this one, I changed that up a little bit along with the nut and the string trees. I changed out the nut and this is actually a bone nut. The nuts that are on these guitars originally are really horrible. They are really soft plastic and they really don't, they don't do any justice to any of the other parts on the guitar. They just really make it hard to stay in tune. The string trees on this, uh, I changed out to match the saddles at the bridge. They're kind of like a gold color. And if you look at the, uh, the if you look at the bushings, they're actually plastic. I actually ordered those thinking that they were metal. They came back plastic and I tried them out and they actually look good and they, they feel good and there's nothing really wrong with them. So they were just a few dollars. And then on the back, I'm going to show you the back of the headstock. I've got a really nice set of tuners that I put on this. These are, they're not expensive, but they're the vintage type tuners and really work well. So this is a, a really nice guitar. Overall, this thing really plays well. I'm going to play it for you a little later in the video, but it's, it's a super nice guitar and it really does have uh, a lot of good qualities. And these Affinity Stratocasters are really kind of one of my favorites. They, they have so much potential. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so just to kind of sum things up, I want to say thank you to my daughter, Caitlin, for doing some of these videos that I've been putting out, and it helps so much to be able to have my hands free. And then I've got this little microphone that you can see pinned on to my collar. This particular setup has two of them, one here, and I have one sitting back by the amp. And I'm thinking maybe the amp's a little bit too loud and it's getting a little distorted. Um, but if you tell me in the comments what you think, we can try to get some adjustments made and, and get this worked out. But if you've enjoyed this content and uh, you've gained something from it, it got you excited to play guitar, excited to maybe mod your instrument, I'm going to ask that you subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and I will see you next time for the next guitar adventure.